Welcome back. We're uh, talking all things champagne after the mm -hmm. competition. Yeah, the best of luck. With the festive season practically uh, upon us, what better excuse to start popping a few corks? So to tell us all we need to know is Dame Chevalier, Jane Powell, uh, a.k.a. Champagne Jane. Uh, an award-winning author and champagne educator. Well, and that is a great job to that have. That is the best job in the world. Yes. Thank you so we much. We love going to champagne lessons. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, please teach us. Well, champagne, it is literally a time machine in a glass. Mm. First mentioned in the history books back in 496, when the first King of France was um, baptised at Reims Cathedral. And it's been our accompaniment with everything celebration ever since. And it wasn't invented by Dom Perignon, which is no, a that's an interesting. Dom Perignon was a very famous monk. He was sent by the Catholic Church down to Champagne in 1668. But this is when Champagne was a sacramental wine, and he was sent to get rid of the bubbles. Oh, really? So it wasn't actually to, to make it was bubbly an champagne. Accident that he that the bubbles were created uh, in well, his well, well, the sh champagne is a, was a still red wine in those times, and it was due to the cold snap in Europe when the canals of Venice froze over that actually uh, you'd get a second fermentation, and that's what added the bubbles to the wine. So oh, did he get there and it. say, actually, no, guys, let's leave this in here. I'm tasting it, yeah, This is no. very nice, and that's what he said, wasn't it? <laughs> he did say, well, you know, that's that thing. What, well, what he actually did was he, he managed to vinify each plot of grapes separately, mm. and therefore you get the flavours and the texture of champagne, which create an orchestra. But I hope life. he did say, I'm tasting stars. Well, it's a bit of politics, well, like, probably more Hollywood. Did. But they, it does taste like stars. All that lovely carbon dioxide. It does. Can we taste some stars? You said probably Absolutely. a bit of Hollywood, not probably poor Hollywood, didn't you then? <laughs> yes, not poor Hollywood. Because he's but not that old. It goes with cake as well. It goes right. with cake. So we're going we're gonna to start by opening um, a couple of boxes of champagne. So inside here you've got six atmospheric pressures. Imagine the pressure inside the tyre of a London double-decker bus. Mm. Mm. Do that's the carbon dioxide all? that's actually me? In, inside mm. the wine here. Well, I'm, I'm so the cork and the muesli. So this is my... Favourite noise in the whole wide world. The gentle sign of it pop. It shouldn't make a noise, thing. really. Really? You're not going to fly it up in the air, you, are you? I'm not shake it about. No, <laughs> you've got, well, no, no, that's more for Formula One, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got 49 million bubbles dissolved in this bottle of wine. Six atmospheric pressures. So you've got the muselet, the muzzle. Yeah. This was invented by Alain Jackson in the middle of the 19th century. One of the favourite champagnes of Napoleon. Yeah. You take this, twiddle it six times. Oh, five, I don't six. know how many I did. No, it's always six. Is it? Yeah. And then keeping your hand over the, the cork, so yeah. you kind of like it, nice on a solid surface, yeah. you twist the bottle. Have you left the muzzle the thingy on there? I have. I think it looks pretty. Oh, That's I okay. Just took mine That's off. okay. That's okay. You, okay. You're obviously always used to it. You twist the bottle, not the cork. All right. And you get a little Beautiful. gentle pop. Like this. I Yours is coming out faster bang. than mine. Very well done. You could start pouring. She has had a lot of experience. You could drink it straight from the bottle. And mine... It doesn't need a glass. <laughs> And, and is it true is that you're supposed to put your thumb up yes. there? Yes. This is a punt. Because of the pressure inside the bottle, you actually want to keep... That keeps the bottle strong. Punt mm -hmm. inside. And then the trick when you're pouring champagne, because of all these bubbles, shimmy along a little bit, um, pour a little drop and then you come back. So if you do those three glasses these there... These three? We've got now, am I meant to tip the glass? No. Oh. Little, top, little pop. Wow. Move along, little pop. You don't want it to... Move, move along, along, little pop. Yes, because of all of that, all of those lovely bubbles coming out. Move along, And then pop. you go back again. That's it. Now, Cristal nice doesn't have a punt. No, Cristal has a flat bottom, and that was because Cristal was created for the Tsar of Russia, and he was very worried about being assassinated. So he didn't want anything, any little holes in his bottle, that anybody could actually plant a bomb. And it was also a clear bottle, yeah, so that everybody would know that... He, they were drinking his champagne. Yeah. Because champagne's obviously got a lot of prestige attached to it. Types of glasses? Well, there are many different types of champagne glasses. Would you like to pop You're a little bit in there, Holly? You're cheered, then. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> um, they're, they're very good job. So, the classic champagne flute is this one here. Oops. Ooh, nearly, not quite. Um, this one here, unfortunately, that doesn't capture much of the aroma because it's not got a wide enough bowl. Mm -hmm. The traditional coupe from the 17th century that were invented by the Venetian glassmakers is La Coupe. La Coupe, C-O-U-P-E. And was it based Model. on Marie Antoinette's breast? Actually, Madame de Pompadour. Oh, was so it? Marie Antoinette ah. was Louis XVI. Louis XV, ah. his favourite mistress, Madame de Pompadour, who was actually a native of Champagne. So, and this was her, that was, is that true? Mm, well, not oh, this particular yeah, one, but the several porcelain, so. Cheers. 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 So Cheers. This, Cheers. This, this glass displays the bubbles beautifully, but because of the large surface area, the carbon dioxide evaporates very quickly, mm. so you don't get a lot of flavour. So it looks yeah. pretty, great for the movies. But not so good to drink through. No, very well made champagne here. This Tesco's Brut Premier Cru, under, under £20, um, 
Nice age on it, down to 16.49 before Christmas. So actually, a very, very good value. Mm -hmm. Very good. So this is the glass that you yes, recommend. This, this, this is the proper side of glass. Now this is the classic flute style. It's also what you might call slightly tulip shaped, which is um, something that's happened really since the Second World War, and it allows the aromas to escape, but it mm. tapers the nose in. If you, if you stick your nose in there, mm. you can smell a lot more going yes, on. Yes, you here, can. Can't you? you can. You can. It's and, lovely. And the thing is that people, I, and I always say this, people really feel very self-conscious. About about sniffing, but if you have got a roast meal, then you oh that chicken smells nice. That's You've it. paid for it, so you fifty percent is in the smell. You drink the wine with your eyes and then your nose. There's very few things you can actually taste in your mouth. You've got sweetness in the front mm. and sourness, bitterness, and, and, and saltiness in your nose. Is it all of those? Can you smell that lovely yeah, yeast? Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed yeah, to sniff it. You pay for it. Peaches. And what's the sign of a good champagne? Like what should you be able to smell? Well, what you want? Well, okay. In, in terms of smell, when you're you're looking at Chardonnay, the white grape, you're kind of looking at apple. Um, citrus fruits and lemons and when you're looking at Pinot Noir, so more yeah. full-bodied, you're looking more kind of strawberry. So you want rich fruit, you want a lovely kind of yeasty toastiness yes, to I it. Like that, yeasty and toastiness. you want fine bubbles in the glass and that's what crystal glasses show as well. Right. Beautiful. So in our final bit of time, mm. um, well, you have a test, test for us. Yes. Okay, so here, ready oh. for Christmas, we've got three different styles of champagne. They're all vintage. So th these were two non-vintage styles. These are actually um, vintage and they range from £25 to £50. I'm not going to tell you what they are, mm. but I want you to taste them all and see which oh, one you like best. That smells lovely. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Nice and, very and fresh and bubbles creamy. on that one. Okay, and this one. Lovely flavours of Chardonnay coming through there as well. Mm. Well, they're all gorgeous. Oh, I was about to say, that one's nice too. There's no such thing happy, as bad champagne. Happy to we need drink. bad bottles of champagne. <laughs> well, I think Silky the one of these two are my favourite. Yep. And that one, the bubbles were really quite soft, but I don't know whether that's because it's almost too soft. Well, regardless, regardless of which is which, this one has got. It smells. Nice. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because I got two. Yeah. I just want to make sure I get it right. So, so, the, so the first one you think smells nice. Love the nice. smell. Love the smell. Lovely smell. Love the soft, smell. Delicate bubbles. That's a little bit rounder, a little bit more fruity. That's my winner. Right. Okay. Um, I think I'm so. going to agree with Holly actually on that one. I do. I, I purely because I, I don't know about the quality, but I like. I like the smell. I think that's a very nice. Shall one. I? Shall I? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What we got? So what this is our for? number one choice. Yeah. This is actually the second priced champagne in the bracket. This is ah. the 2006 by Piper Heidegg. Lovely. Piper Heidegg was a Piper. Piper Champagne was presented to Marie Antoinette just before Revolution, so this house was founded in 1785. Right. Um, it's a new release vintage. This is just under £50. And the one look... that you said had more depth of flavour and fruit is, of course, the Pernod Jouet, ah. based on those lovely designs. Emily Gelly, 1902. Well, that bottle. That, that, that so what's under here, then? And there dun, 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 dun. Brilliant value for money. Vintage Champagne 2005 from Sainsbury's. Ah. So that's only £25 and then under 20 I think, when it's on special. Very so good. A I nice know, range of prices. There wasn't an awful lot between them, I no, didn't all, think. All there wasn't like... Could you tell there was a big step nice. up there from here, though, because you get more focused flavours with vintage. Yeah. And Definitely a greater from the depth. first, not so much from that one. But mm. that's only me. But Moet is the most popular champagne in the world, so mm. every 30 seconds somebody's popping the cork on a bottle of Moet. So every 45 seconds classic. it's you. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Lovely. Cheers. 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 And, uh, Cheers. Very, um, very Cheers. merry... Um, happy Christmas. Nadoli Klauen, Nadoli Klauen, he blowed the new year. What does that mean? Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in Welsh. Oh, oh that's very nice. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Well, if that's you'd like that more... well-known uh, great breed. <laughs> 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 if you'd like more information on today's featured fears, you'll find all the details on the website.